yesterday or the day before, there was a very interesting article in the uh, Washington Post about that whole idea of uh, thought controlling your te uh, a technology controlling your thoughts. And it had to do with, and maybe somebody can look up the link, uh, it had to do with uh, the religious right and the anti-vaxxers using technology to really torpedo um, the um, use of the vaccine and masks. And it was a very interesting article because it basically highlighted how the technology was being used uh, and the people who are using the technology, um, who are on the receiving end, don't even realize where this is coming from, okay? And it was a very interesting article and I recommend it highly if somebody wants to look up or maybe I'll look it up and post it for you. Um, okay. But uh, it was a very, you know, I, it is a double-edged sword. The other thing I have to share is uh, the, that whole idea of algorithms and who's controlling the technology that many of us use. Um, last summer, um, 4th of July, um, it was really bad because somebody posted a uh, uh, post about the 4th of July celebration at Mina Lake, which was going to include a boat parade. And I actually posted several times and it was removed by somebody someplace in Facebook as being an inappropriate post. Uh, I suppose they thought it was something to do with Antifa or something, I don't know. But I'm there, why are they picking on Mina Lake? I mean, that was been going on for years and it was really quite scary that this unknown force was uh, sort of moderating what we were being allowed to know and to uh, be involved in our environment and that someone someplace could censor that. That was really very scary. So that's all I have to say today, I think. Yeah, yeah. well, we'll, we'll, we'll have more uh, edges of this, of this circle to deal with. Who, who wants to be next? Just go ahead. I'm, I will be next and hmm. I think, yeah. Um, I'm looking at, the word balance, mm. uh, the positives of technology versus the negative and how we can balance our humanity with it. So I, I would use the word balance, if, if I may, with those things. And because what type of technology is not the same for the, in another one and how you use it. Mm. And the second thing I think I would say would be uh, stressing us as humans and maintaining our humanity is the importance of she uh, I can't think of the last lady's name already uh, Barb uh, Barb yes of that uh, how you use it and educating people how to use it um, uh, intelligently and to be aware of how we are persuaded and used by it. Self-realization of the pull of technology versus humanity. In fact, this video would be, I would say, would be a must for all humans to see. Um, but the, the third thing was that I heard a uh, speaker I admire very greatly in the 1990s, late 1990s, and um, very good friend of mine, but his same statement, mainly as this man, is he said, in the next 10 years, things are going to be changing more than they have for the last 100 years. And I'm looking since that time, yeah, we've gotten the cell phone and we did have computers, but not to the extent of use. And it's going to come quicker and, and also um, more changing in our lives. And now here's this man saying it's <laughs> 
300 years and even faster than that. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is we're on a roller coaster on the downward slide. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to give a sermon, but I was listening to all. And I got in late and very quickly, I'm going to say, I have been under stress, the most stress in my entire life. And I still am. And I looked at the time and I thought they're having the meeting and I love you guys. And if I get off, please understand. My husband has been, it's, it's awful. He's now in hospice and I'm the only person that takes care of everything. Expenses where he goes, da, 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 da. And it's a bit much, but thank you for being part of my life. Mm, yeah. Thank you for being a part of mine. And is there, is there anything, by the way, if there's something I can do, uh, e email us, you know, uh, or put your, I don't have your email. Um, I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Thank you very much. And yes, I have many needs. One is like it's when it's 20 below zero and I've got a pickup, but it won't start and it's out in the, in the <laughs> far parking lot of the hospital. That's the things that friends are wonderful. And I consider you people that, okay. And okay. I'll get off. Okay. Thank you. Thank well, you. I'll listen. I'll be listening though, but I'm not going to chat anymore. Okay. Anyone else? Is there a link to the good morning, everyone? Can I see those smiles? <laughs> Come on, Paul, give it up, give it up. Um, would I be able to get the link because um, uh, for the for the video, because I came in uh, towards the end and then I had a call uh, that I had to take. Sure. Um, can we put that, can we put the link in, uh, Ryan? And uh, in fact, I think what I'll do, now that you mentioned that, I will put in a number of links because I have a whole bunch of them here. I'm going to put those in the, the chat and there will be much more information about uh, this kind of change. I just put it in the chat. So after if and you just so you know, on the bottom right hand corner of the chat, there are three little dots. If you click on those dots, you can uh, usually save it to your computer. You can save the, the chat, all, all the things in the chat in the computer, or you can select everything now and then paste it in, let's say a, a word processing uh, application like Microsoft Word or Pages or uh, Text Edit or any, anything, or, but then you can save it, okay? Okay, were you going to uh, give us some feedback? Just because um, <clears throat> I missed the two brilliant women before me. Mm. Um, but the one thing, because I looked at what was being spoken of mm. uh, and the, the vax, the vax, vaxxers, anti-vaxxers and all kinds of stuff. The one thing that technology has done has, has made it easier to be by yourself. And I'm not talking about, you know, how it was in the older days when people were looking at National Geographic and yeah, but so on and so forth. Uh, so anyway, the, the, the idea of being able to look and see validation for your ideas and being able to put those validations out there and uh, be able to be supported, you find a lot of support. Whereas if you didn't have it, you would have to write a letter. Somebody would have to like write a letter back to you and so on. And before you got that next letter, your pastor was in there saying, now, you know, Jesus wept. Come on now. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit more of a, um, of a well, what you, radicalizing what happened on January 6th. Mm -hmm. What has happened all the way along? Because you had Rodney King and somebody had a, a eight millimeter video of him getting beat up mm -hmm. and that didn't do anything. But with, um, <clears throat> with what happened to George Floyd mm -hmm. going live and so on, it did more to make people aware of what was going on. And on top of that, what happened when the, when the ex-president went with the Bible 
and he went there and everybody got sprayed and and all the rest of those things and you saw it on tv with your with your technology white folks said uh wait a minute hold on this is this is not wait a minute uh, i heard about this but now i see it and it's real and then people started looking back at the history so i put that all out there in the context of it's all interesting and and you can find something for for whatever it is that you're believing in but the one thing uh especially with the difference between rodney king and george floyd is the fact that it was instant it was instantaneous and you were able to see a black person being messed up and you're able to see some white people being messed up and that brought the country together like wow we are all in this because if you're a slave, you get beat. If you object to beating a slave, you get beat yourself. So, you know, it just it just made it hey, out there. So technology is is the way that it is, good, bad, and indifferent. So, but I, I do want to see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for uh uh that contribution, Naima. Anyone else? Don't speak up at once. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say a couple things quickly here, I think. Um, this is an ongoing conversation I have with one of my best friends and you know a source of uh, good conversation in our relationship. And that was why I asked Ryan for the link right away. I was like, ooh, my buddy needs to see this so we can, uh, he, he's much more um, technologically savvy than I am, um, but he's also, frequently saying I've got too much tech clutter in my life. I wish I could simplify like I do, uh, or referring to me that I'm just like, oh, I just don't need that stuff. Um, uh, acknowledging that there's just been some incredible advances in my lifetime in all of our lifetimes that, that have helped in a lot of ways, but that sort of happiness and life balance and, uh, addiction to technology is, is very real. And, uh, I'm definitely enjoying everyone's comments and uh, look forward to the rest of the conversation. Good. Anybody else? Well, while you're thinking about it, just so we kind of move along and, and at any time, you know, when you have a thought that you'd like to share, we're certainly interested. But I'd like to take a look at how we define technology. And a lot of times when we say technology, we are often talking about our cell phone or the, the, um, the control device for your TV or something like that. But I'd like to know what you think technology is, or just give some examples of, of technology. I well, Lawrence, uh, go ahead, Barbara. Today, <laughs> oh, okay. Who, who is this? Is that yeah. Uh, yeah. Today, you know, with all of the trouble with the power in Texas, yeah. I've really started to think about what is technology. And it isn't, I think Lawrence is correct. It's not just um, your cell phone, your computer. Uh, I think we're talking about washing machines, microwaves vacuum cleaners. Now, I don't really miss the washing machines and vacuum cleaners for a few days, but I, I think we really have to think about, um, you know, the devices that maybe our grandparents or great-grandparents did not have, maybe even a heater for our home. Uh, in some respects, that could be considered technology. Exactly, exactly. Any other examples? I keep thinking today about, about the seven minutes of terror, um, the, the landing on Mars today. Oh, hold, 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 hold on a second. I think we got a strange echo. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's not just you. Um, I'm not sure. My mic was open and I didn't know it. I, I'm closing it again now. Oh, well. This is Betty. Oh. Oh, okay. If, if you're, yeah, if you're, if your mic is on and it's flowing through. Okay. Try it. Try again, Thea. 
I'm interested today in the seven minutes of terror, they're calling it, with the Mars landing, the Mars rover. And um, I did a little extra research on it. And um, what I found really interesting is that the UAE and China both have Mars rovers going down this week as well. So that kind of technology really interests me. Okay. All right, so we, we have a few. Any other kinds of technologies that you are aware of, or how do you define it? Well, let, let me let me just throw out a few, and maybe it'll 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 prompt some that uh, you know about but just didn't think about at this moment. Uh, medical technology, uh, biotech. And when I say medical technology, it's everything from devices like uh, we have some nanotechnologies now that uh, that are redefining prosthetics uh, so that to the point that in competitions like Olympic competitions, they say, well, that guy can't race with us because he has that that bionic leg and he'll win all the races with his bionic leg. So here's a guy who can race who can run faster with no legs than people with who've been highly trained who have legs, uh, to give you an idea. Uh, things like, uh, even like um, uh, cataract removal, okay? Cataract removal, that's high tech. Uh, and then cleaning up the cornea with lasers, that's high tech, you know? Uh, Pretty soon, you'll be having like microbots to go in and remove things like stones and uh, and even to uh, stop hemorrhaging, you know. So what your body isn't able to do, they will put in a microbot and guide it along to do it, and then they can extract the microbot, you know. Uh, vaccines, that's technology vaccines, um, microwaves, you know, cooking, the cooking of food, even the um, localized heating of objects using microwaves. You know, uh, I remember in Japan, oh gosh, must have been 20 years ago, more, 30 years ago, uh, one of the places I lived, it had a, the heating unit was just you. you the, 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 for, in, however they explained it, the way I understood how they explained it is that um, the reason that you could see if you turned off the heat, uh, the reason that the water was so cold, but you were warm is because it wasn't warming up the whole room. It was just warming you up, you know? Uh, and all kinds of things in between. Uh, food processing, the way we uh, not only uh, grow food, but the way we manufacture food for convenience so that the food is, you know, there's no microorganisms uh, present because they don't want to be or they're dead, um, but the food is more digested it's, it's ready for digestion. When you eat it, it's ready for, it's, it's ready to go almost directly into your bloodstream completely with, complete with all of the micronutrients that have been added. That's also technology. But that technology, interestingly enough, it started when somebody decided that it was better to throw that animal in the fire and let it burn and then eat it than to try to eat it raw. So technology had already begun, you know, and that's in large part what's given humanity its, on some level, uh, uh, competitive advantage. It's, our, it's one of our competitive advantages, not that other organisms don't have competitive advantages as well, but it's one of ours. So those are a few examples of technology. Can you think of any others? Can I say something again? <laughs> sure, absolutely. 
this is all very, very enlightening. And I like how you were giving me an example. I'm going to get very basic. Mm. Um, our existence, there are three type of resources, natural resources. You've all had this in economics class, probably. Economics, human, and capital. Capital is basically anything made by the people. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, is the capital resources that we're getting out of balance. Mm -hmm. Using too many natural, you get too many people, or you get too many, too much capital resources and one is lacking or has a negative effect on the other. I see that as a, as a, a large amount in my lifetime, which is a lot. Mm. And we as humans have a lot of power, but not enough power to manage the other three resources sometimes intelligently. Mm. And it's, and yet, if you have faith of some sort and whatever spirituality you might have, um, maybe we realize we're part of the problem. And how do we work through that? Because who, who would want to living in today's world? What are you going to give up? Mm. Mm. Can you say a little bit more about that, Lee? When you say, what are you going to give up? To, to, because there is that cost benefit thing. Right. Are you going to give up relationships? What's important to you? Can you do without one of your TVs? Can you give up one of your vehicles? Uh, but then are you affecting other people's resources? It's such a domino effect. I, I don't have an answer. I just can see the problem is huge. Um, I'm amazed how many People need new things. I, of course, people laugh at me, but I'm still using my irons from 1958 that I had then, and they're just like, there's nothing wrong with them. I still had my treadle sewing machine. Having said that, it works. No, I'm not a seamstress. You need more. But do we all need better and better and bigger? And it and the companies make it so that they break down and they make more money. And why is that? There's a whole thing. Boy, if you have the answer, let me know. <laughs> I'm going to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so I can buy more things. <laughs> so uh -huh. anyone else have anything that comes to mind? Well, while you're thinking about that, um, one of the, the issues that comes up with technology is um, the ethics. With great power comes great responsibility. And we can see way before today's technological boom that humans have invented things that their sense of ethics have never caught up to, especially when you get into things like weapons of war. Um, we can do things to each other now that exceed our ability to have restraint. You know, we know, as one of my um, uh, teachers said to me, even in high school, uh, he said to the class, you know, people um, 
are smart enough to invent bombs, but they're not smart enough not to use them. <laughs> so that gets to the heart of our ethical dilemma. There are things that we can do with technology, but we have not thought enough about whether we should use them and how we should use them. And yes, there are ethicists who have these intellectual philosophical discussions, which are useful, but I don't mean those guys. Um, I mean us. I mean those of us who are using it every day. You know, um, a good example is the technology of, let's say, assault weapons. You know, people can talk about, oh, I have my right to do this and stuff. Yeah, but are you smart enough not to do it? And if you're not, should the rest of us live under the threat of you? Those are ethical arguments about the technology of weaponry. You know, whatever the constitution or our own personal beliefs are, there are ethics involved in that. Um, our cars, you know, and how we use them. Uh, our uh, food, you know, and how we distribute food, the balance of it, overall resources, and how we have the technology to make more resources actually more efficiently available to more people. But what we find is despite that ability to do that, we still have this, I, I hate to use the word propensity, but I can't think of a better word, but you know, this inclination, or I don't know if that's even better, but we tend to want to hoard, the, hoard stuff anyway, even though there's plenty for everybody. So we have a technology that says, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll make more stuff available to more people and even potentially better stuff that more targets what people need, but uh, we end up hoarding. Now, a good example of that is energy. Now, if we go back to when we were first doing fire, for example, and a lot of our energy has to do on some level a lot of yeah, our energy needs on some level is about fire. So if we go back to is the early use of fire, most of it seems to have been wood. There wasn't very much else that people were burning beside wood or some cellulose, uh, cellulosic material, something that's chemically, on a chemical level, it's like wood. It might be leaves, you know, or whatever. But that's pretty much what it was. Now, if all the people on the planet were still just using wood, it would not be pretty. I've lived in country, countries where, or a country, where the primary source of cooking uh, uh, fuel was wood. And it looks more smoggy than LA on a bad day because everybody was burning wood. And this was like out in the Sahel, you know, there's no buildings trapping it and stuff like that. This is like on the open Sahel, which is like somewhere between the desert and the plains, you know? And for as far as you could see was this dense smoke. So uh, people started using technology to use less fuel, okay? but there was, there was a cultural resistance to that technology, even though it was a blank stove. I remember this one guy telling me a story that makes a long story short. He was, he gave this woman this, uh, he built this woman this uh, stove and her neighbors came over, looked at the stove and, and, and said, you've turned white, haven't you? <laughs> this is in West Africa. So it was like a rejection of that technology, you know, because it was a new thing. It was, not, that's not the way we always use three, three rocks, you know, and now here you think you're something now because you're going to use the, 
they're your little brick stove, you know. <laughs> so it, it's it's a lot of levels that we we reject technology, but one of them should be uh, whether we re accept or reject it should be on the best basis of ethics. So my question to you would be what do you think would be an ethical basis or how would you decide whether something you would use something or not based on just an ethical decision whether it's good for you or good for other people what are some of the considerations that you would make or is that question too hard You know, the question that that question has a sense of uh, age to it. Uh, people would answer def differently at a different level of their experience. Yeah. So, yeah, I uh, technology making it making it easier for me yet and still not hired for someone else because my this th this is my year of cause and effect that is where i am in my in in this year cause and effect looking at it like oof, very very closely so if the technology whether it's using four stones instead of three if it's going to um have an end result of of having a problem then um uh, i would rework it and also, in, you know, I, I'm not the end all, although I'm the queen of the universe, I don't know everything. So I would be asking a lot of, a lot of questions because I can only see what is working for me from my perspective. I have to open up and look at every, everyone else's perspective. That's why I'm saying it's a cause and effect year for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lawrence, I yeah. think before we get personal about about our personal ethics, I think we have to talk about who do we allow to make the ethical decisions. Hmm. Um, it seems at least recently that there are a lot of decisions such as the distribution of the electrical power that we don't really have any control over. So I think before we talk about the personal, our personal responsibilities to make ethical decisions, we have to talk about who is making the decisions. Is it us or is it somebody else? And if it's somebody else, who is it? And is that appropriate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we all love Naima, so I think we should just let her make all the decisions. <laughs> well, you're really asking for trouble now. <laughs> I would love to be able to, can, can I, just to back up what Barbara's saying, um, you talk about ethical and how that works. I, I have a story, and I'll be really quick. In the 80s, I was uh, driving and owning cabs, and I got these three guys from the airport, and I was taking them down to the Marriott or someplace. And they were sitting in the back of the cab talking about this company that they had pretty much, I call it pretty woman, where they cannibalized everything and, and just totally, totally took it apart. And when they took that company apart, uh, they gave themselves uh, each $10,000 for doing it and so on. And a little later on, somebody else had come in and uh, <laughs> they, they were really upset. I'm not laughing, but they were really upset because the stock that they, or the job that their wife had, he had she had just lost it. And he was really upset because they had all these bills and so on and so forth. Come to find out, the company that was cannibalized was the company that he worked that his wife worked for, and he owned stock in that company and voted with everybody else to cannibalize the very company that she worked for. So yeah, Barb, you hit it right. You hit that right squarely on on the head. They, they, they gave permission to cannibalize it and they didn't look a little further to see exactly what that meant or they didn't care. But yeah, I and, and no, I did not hurt those guys in the back. I took them where they needed to go. They gave me a nice tip and I gave it to the next person I saw. I was 
thoroughly disgusted. Yeah. Well, I think it's an interesting point you bring up, um, uh, Naima, because uh, part of it is our own personal processing power, even though we're, we're looking at like, well, you know, in the bigger scale, which certainly makes sense, but it does get back to us personally, because uh, how we choose and how we make decisions is largely based on our, our ability to perceive what we're doing. You know, a lot of people, they, they make decisions based on, you know, the information they have and their particular understanding. And sometimes they couldn't see the, the, the uh, foolishness of their choices before they make the mistake because there is no precedent, at least for them. There's no way for them to know until they make that decision and then they can see where it leads. Now we can have a discussion about why we actually do need to have catalytic converters on cars. But when you first introduce it, doesn't it just seems like you're just adding expense to this car. And, and of course the catalytic converters at first weren't nearly as efficient as they became. And so people would say, well, it's not even working, so let's don't do that. You know, you didn't go far enough down the maze, so to speak, to see what the outcome was going to be. So, you know, if somebody would start with fire and you say, oh, that, that fire thing is never going to be any good. It, you know, it works today, but in 200,000 years, it's going to be the end of the human race. You know, who, who around the campfire was going to say that? you know, because you can't see 200,000 years or even 20,000 or even 2,000, two years down the road. So that becomes in itself a dilemma. It's like, well, how do you get the wisdom to make the, uh, the, the ethical decisions that we, we have to make either as a, as a, a collective society or individuals. So uh, any other thoughts on, on ethics, the ethics of, of um, technology? This is Betty speaking up on scene, but not on heard. Um, this is just bouncing off the top of my brain. Uh, Barb, question who is making our decisions and that that's something we need to look at. Uh, it occurs to me that perhaps um, at the level I knowingly use technology, uh, perhaps it frees me up to pay more attention to, to uh, the people I'm voting for. Uh, we're so busy and now I have the luxury of being retired, which means I can work for myself now and hopefully for for those around me in some way. Uh, those of us who worked most of our lives, who worked hard, kept our noses to that proverbial round stone, uh, didn't have time or ability or whatever to really figure out what was going on community-wise, let alone state and national and globally. Um, so maybe that's one advantage of technology is it will help us to pay more attention to how things are being decided and, and perhaps have more effect so that we don't have Texas all over the place. <laughs> well, I think that, I think that uh, monkey's out of the cage. We're gonna be having more Texas <laughs> incidents because whatever we do today, it's gonna take a while before we turn this battleship around. It's not gonna, this, you know, whatever we do with uh, climate change, from my vantage point, um, we're going to be paying at, at the very, very minimum for the last 50 years because it's going to take us more than my lifetime to turn it around. But whenever we start, is better than not starting. You know, um, before as we as we sort of move toward our our the end of our our little chat here today. Um, I would like to have any of you or all of you uh, give some 
uh, your idea of the balance between the cost and benefit of technology, or uh, if you have thoughts on whether or not or to what extent technology has disrupted your life or someone else's life that you know. Any thoughts? It may have caused divisions uh, in my generation. There are, I'm afraid, a lot of people who don't use the uh, internet, for instance, which is a big subject. And I feel that they are missing out on so much. Uh, and they probably think I'm wasting a lot of my time in front of the computer or something. But that's, that's one place where it has affected because it has come on so fast. Um, so it's difficult to latch onto it and make sense of it quickly enough to have it be a good thing. So you're saying that the that the that the technology changes too fast? Is that am I hearing you right? No, I'm just saying for some people that never uh, opted into, for instance, getting any kind of a digital device and learning how to use it, even at a basic level, such as for email or getting on the internet to look up something that they ordinarily go to their Britannica set for. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think it's an unfortunate outcome uh, that has increased the, 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 uh, the gap because many of us don't go anywhere, especially now. And then I think about my neighbors across the street who don't have any kind of technology in their home um, and right now can't even really get to the library. <laughs> so uh, those kinds of things, I don't know if there's any if that makes sense to other people. But I, I find myself, yes, I, find myself. Thinking I could share yeah. something digital share something. with your neighbors and, and they're not available. They're not available. Yes, Betty, I really agree with you. I'm now living in a, a retirement community where the average age is, get this, 90 years old. So there's a lot of people here who don't use technology. And it was very difficult for me, who is somewhat savvy in technology, to come here and to, one, encounter a whole group of people who were very depressed and who are very depressed because they haven't been able to interact with the world. Uh, and then to, once again, be on the bleeding edge of technology, um, trying to get people to consider using it. Uh, uh, still in this age group, a lot of resistance. And um, that, that's really very difficult. Um, you know, so I, I, I hear your pain, Betty. Thank you for bringing that up. Jennifer, you look like you're cracking to say something. <laughs> well, I have been in and out of this conversation as phone calls and things have been happening in the back, background. Um, I've really appreciated it a lot. Um, I, I think that I probably would have come into it saying that technology on balance has made my life, has not improved my life. Um, but when broadening the examples of technology, especially when you talk about healthcare uh, and all of the advances there, when we talk about heating our homes, when we talk about cooking our food, when we talk about all of those things, um, I think we tend to think of the most recent technology and specifically focus on things like social media technology and, and, and our concern about those things is valid. But on balance, absolutely, technology has made my life better in many ways. I think for most of us, it's just a matter of how do we push back against the things that we don't think are enriching our lives. And that's something we all just have to work on. That, that is so true, uh, Jennifer. And I think it gets to the heart of, of at least the purpose of this discussion. And that is like, well, trying to make the, the uh, cost benefit analysis, what does it cost? Uh, what are the benefits? 
and how can we raise the benefits and lower the cost? You know, because for everything, there's going to be some cost. You know, so I think, at least in my in my view of the world and my experience in the world, there's nothing, there's no free lunch. Even if we don't pay it, somebody's got to pay it. You know, so there's no free lunch. So, and it may not be in money. We usually think cost and like, well, how much money will it cost? Now, the money is just, it's not really a thing. It costs us in other ways. And sometimes we don't know the cost. And that's, to me, that's one of the worst case scenarios is when we think that there's no cost and therefore we can, you know, go willy nilly um, and use it a lot, but then we're paying we just don't recognize. It's like having a hole in your ship, but sailing along thinking everything's fine, you know. But in the meantime, that ship is that uh, you're not noticing that it's sinking, you know. Um, yeah, Lee, you wanted to say something? Yeah. I, first of all, I want to thank you very much for letting me be part of this fantastic group of thinkers. And uh, yes, technology and whoever just spoke, I don't remember names, but she said in a community. I, I am in a community of 76 units around here and they just kind of laugh at me because I'm always the one coming up with crazy things. But I've always wanted to learn. And so from the first time they started this programming, I was uh, not a young person and I just took it in full hearted. It was something new to learn and love it and, and enjoy it. And because of that, the positive of it at this time in the last year, thank goodness, look at the people I have met. Look at the information and relationships that have developed through it. Mm. So that's definitely a positive. Um, and again, we have to understand where each person is coming from. And each person is unique and has different needs, et cetera. But this is one of the highlights of coming back to Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. Well, excellent. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you all publicly for your offer to help. Do not be surprised. I wrote my notes. You're going to laugh at this on a newspaper topping because you see, I can never remember where I keep my notes, but I will have that. And don't be surprised if I contact you. you and I, I've got, I, I didn't realize how to copy those sites, but I will figure that out somehow. I tried to copy it and go back and put it in my notes, but for some reason i couldn't figure that out yeah but we'll do okay so okay uh and i just love you this group <laughs> lee if you if you put your if you put your email <clears throat> excuse me if you put your email in the chat um i'll i'll send you uh actually i can send you all the ones that i have saved from here if you want me to. oh i will do that just as we speak right now i will go into the notes okay can, i will give me, do a couple, give me a couple of days but i'll i'll oh I'll do that. heavens i'm not thinking about time at this point in my life okay <laughs> will do well excellent well we've actually come to the end of our time here on our uh, our chat and and time together. Uh, I want to invite you to uh, join us again next week. But in the meantime, uh, we're trying to play around with uh, times and uh, content and stuff like that. So uh, you will be getting, if you didn't get it from the chat, you will be getting an email um, asking you to participate in a survey. And that survey will uh, ask you about times. It will give you an opportunity to choose uh, a better time so that we can get a, a, a sense of, of all the people who are interested in what we're doing here. What's the best time for you? You know, uh, because we have some flexibility, but uh, we need to know what's best for most people. The other thing is, as we're exploring different ideas, it's important to get your input. 
I mean, I know most of you only from this uh, experience, whatever we're, we're calling this that we're doing. I know most of you from that, but I don't know, like maybe like the kind of things that you're interested in. And I started with the, with the idea that you don't know either, you know, because if you've never, no one ever told you about some of the things that I'm going to or have introduced, then there was no way that you could know whether or not you were interested in it or that kind of thing. But at least some of the time, I can bring some maybe new ideas to an idea or something that you have a question about or that you would like to have discussed. So uh, you will be contacted and we will, maybe one of these sessions will be about that. What kind of things are interesting to you? Because I have a whole cornucopia of things that I'm interested in because I'm just always interested in lots of things. So, uh, and I often have resources that I have discovered that other people don't have uh, in terms of getting information. So with that, we can put that together and uh, kick up our, our level of conversation a notch or two. So uh, with that, unless someone else has any parting things, we're going to uh, see you next week. Okay. Hold on, Barb. Uh, Leanne, did, uh, I'm putting Barb, Leanne, and everybody else all in one. Um, Lee, I didn't get your uh, email in here. I sent it to Lawrence because I can. I didn't know who who was asking. I just said, Lawrence, oh. would you send it to you? Oh, Actually, okay. I can. I can tell it to you right now. My initial L T, as in Thomas. Rains, R A I N E S, altogether small at sio.midco.net. Uh huh. <laughs> Rains. Thank you so much. And yeah. you are queen of the universe. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm glad it's a female. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're going to let her make all the choices. <laughs> Whatever she says is fine. <laughs> I, all I can say is I, I do my best. <laughs> That's all, all right. we, anyone can do. Yep. Amen. Okay. We'll see all of you next week. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you.